going to walk through this chemistry of color. Now, the reason why we went from medical sciences into the chemistry section is we weren't able to get to the chemistry section. It's the last week of school, and I was like, well, what can we do that would be a little bit of fun for everybody in the classroom? And I was like, well, we'll do the chemistry of color. And once we learn about that, then we always make tie-dye shirts and answer some questions about wavelengths coming off of your tie-dye shirt. So this is really the last reference page, last packet that we'll have in here. All right, um, so it says color. Color is everywhere. We live in a world of colors. Not only are colors of every shade found in nature, we also like to surround ourselves with human-made products assembled in our favorite colors. The colors you see in nature are almost always there for an important reason. A flower's color helps to draw the attention of insects that will help with pollination of the plant. The bright colors of a poison arrow frog warn potential predators that they should leave the frog alone if they know what is good for them. The frog is poisonous and will make a predator extremely sick if the frog is eaten. The green color of a katydid grasshopper helps it become camouflaged in the green tree leaves where it lives. Predators have a difficult time finding and eating the katydid. The colors of human-made products like cars, clothes, carpets, and toys are simply chosen to please those who purchase them. So what is color? The colors that you see around you are nothing more than light energy. Light energy travels from place to place in waves that are similar to the waves you might see on the ocean. And this is what kind of is crazy to think about is the different colors you see depends on the wavelength. So, you know, if you see an ocean or even on the pond, it's a nice calm day and the, and the waves, if there are any, are really like small versus like a really windy day and you see these big waves. Well, the waves of colors come in different sizes too. So the size of the wave determines what color you see. Waves, like in the ocean or in the light, are described by the term wavelength. Wavelength is simply the distance between one wave to the next. So it, like down here, this to right here, the length from here to here, that is a wavelength. Okay, a long wavelength has a long distance between one wave and the next. So like this would be a longer wavelength. This is a shorter one. A short wavelength has small distance between one wave and the next. As soon as, you, as soon as one wave goes by, another wave arrives immediately. With light waves, the light wavelength determines what color you see. Red color is light energy that has the longest wavelengths of any visible light. So this right here is red light. But look at this, this wavelength is much smaller. So this is violet. Violet color is light energy that has the shortest wavelengths of any visible light. So think of Roy G. Biv. That is the color spectrum. Roy, red, orange, yellow, G for green, and then Biv is blue and violet. All the other colors have wavelengths between red and violet. You may have heard of the phrase Roy G. Biv. The letters of this phrase stand for the colors of the rainbow and are placed in order from longest wavelength to shortest wavelength. So red being my longest, Violet being my shortest wavelength, okay? And these are all in between. So longest, orange is pretty long, yellow pretty long. We're getting into that medium section, then we get shorter until we get to violet, okay? Wavelength can be measured. On the ocean, you might measure the distance between one wave and the next in feet or meters. Light waves, however, are so small that a very small unit called a nanometer is often used to measure the distance between, between one wave and the next. Hold your thumb and index finger apart so that you can barely see a space between them. This space is about one millimeter in length. Now imagine dividing this millimeter space into a million very tiny spaces. Each of these unbelievably tiny spaces would be one nanometer in length. The symbol for a nanometer is NM. So really, I'm sitting here doing that, like I've got it to where my fingers are just not even touching, they're barely apart. And then I would have to take that itty bitty space that I'm looking at and divide that up a million times more. So it's impossible for us to see that small. The table below shows each color in its wavelength measurement in nanometers. As you can see, red has the longest wavelength with violet the smallest. So red colors are in the 700 nanometer range, whereas violet is in the 400. And you can see where I like just a little bit of change, violet to indigo to blue. It's just a little bit of change there. If light energy with a wavelength of around 700 nanometers enters your eye, you will see red. If light energy with a wavelength of around 470 nanometers enters your eyes, you will see blue. Where does the color white fit in? And this is important because they will ask when I'm reading this and trying to like make sure you hear this because they're going to ask you questions here in a second about this. 
So where does white fit in? White is the color you see when all the color of wavelengths enter your eye at the same time. White light is really Roy G. Biv all mixed together. So right now I am staring at the white on my computer screen and a white piece of paper. And that is because from that image right there, those particular areas in white are emitting every wavelength of frequency to my eye. And I see white from that. Because that, like when the sunlight, and here's the thing, the sun has to hit it. You have to have energy hit it. So as soon as light energy hits that paper, the stuff that gets reflected back to my eye in those spaces is every single color. And that's why I see white. And it, it seems weird, right? It seems like if they all hit your eye, it should be black because every color is hitting your eye, but it's not, it's white. So where does the color black fit in? Black is the color you see when there are no color wavelengths entering your eye. In other words, black is just the absence of light. So here, this area right here that is, I see black, I'm sure everybody sees black right here. It is because when light energy hits that, it is all absorbed and nothing is admitted to my eye. So right now with the lights on in here, the light hits my computer screen and it absorbs all the colors of light right there and nothing is reflected back to my eye. So I just see black and you all see black, all right? But in this right here, this white section, light hits this and every single wavelength of color is reflected back to my eyes. All right. So what makes the things around me appear different colors? Remember that white light contains all the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. White light comes from the sun or from artificial sources like light bulbs. If white light, a combination of Roy G. Biv, enters your eyes, you will see white. If you have, uh, you have already learned that chemical compounds, molecules have many properties. One of these properties is color. When white light from the sun or a light bulb hits a chemical compound, the compound will absorb some of the wavelengths of light energy. Uh, the compound then reflects the remaining wavelengths of light energy to your eyes. That's why I was just trying to explain to you guys. For example, find something red in the room and stare at it. The red object you are looking at contains a special chemical compound. White light from the sun or light is hitting the object you are staring at, and the special chemical that is present is absorbing most of the wavelengths of light energy from the white light. The chemical you are looking at is absorbing the wavelengths of orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet from the white light. This chemical, however, does not absorb the red wavelengths of light, which reflect or bounce off the chemical and enter your eye. So I'm sitting here and I'm looking at my daughter has colored an angry bird red. And I'm looking at this red angry bird, and what's happening is when light, and it has to be a light source, has to hit it. So when there's no light, everything, there's no color. And I've had kids go crazy and argue over, oh, argue over this with me before. But right now, I've got my lights on, so the light from the, my light bulbs are hitting that red angry bird, and they are absorbing every color and reflecting red back into my lights. Every other color is still there. It's just being absorbed. Um, all right. Find something blue in the room. This object contains a completely different chemical compound that absorbs the wavelengths of red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, and violet from the white light and reflects blue wavelengths back to your eye. Find something black in the room. This object contains a different chemical that absorbs all wavelengths of white light. There is no light reflected from this object to enter your eyes, so this object appears black. The chemistry of your clothes, the early years. Through the ages, clothes have been made from natural materials like leather, wool, fabric, silk fabric, and cotton fabric. Different styles of clothes can be made from these materials. However, there is one major problem. Most of the mater these materials are a light tan color. Boring. People want color. Where could color chemical compounds for clothes be found? The science of chemistry was still in its early stages, and brightly colored chemicals could not be constructed in the laboratory. So. People experimented with colored plants and animals in nature, looking for colored chemicals that could be transferred to their clothes, blankets, etc. Looking for good colored chemicals was a long trial and error process. Out of all the colored chemicals in nature, only a few were found that had the perfect characteristics. One, the color must be bright. Two, the color must be fast. When a color is fast, it means the colored chemical bonds tightly to the fabric and is not easily washed out. It is permanent and will not easily fade away. So think about that. Um, when we use dyes, like for tie-dye, when we tie-dye these shirts in here, um, after we get done tie-dyeing them, we'll let them sit for a day, 
and then we'll try to rinse them out. And when you guys rinse them out, like all these dyes come out of the shirt. So we want what is considered to be fast, and that means that it's going to bond to the shirt and not wash out. So, I mean, you can, I mean, dyes can wash away, and then you, you don't see that bright red or bright blue maybe that you tie dyed with. And uh, it's because the chem it's the chemicals that are causing the colors to be absorbed and reflected. <clears throat> okay, um, when a good color chemical or dye was discovered in an area, it was a big deal. Entire industries developed in the area to grow and collect the dye chemical and then trade or sell to the dye to other parts of the world. Uh, here are a few of the important natural dyes used throughout our history on Earth. We have red. The Dutch grew the matter plant and extracted a red chemical from its roots. This dye was used to color the coats of the English sol soldiers during the Revolutionary War. The red coats are coming, the red coats are coming. Another good source of red dye was discovered in Mexico by grinding up a small insect found there. Purple, the Phoenicians discovered a purple colored chemical that had to be extracted from the shell of a snail. However, this dye was so expensive to produce that only the rich could afford to wear purple. Yellow, many plants throughout the world have been discovered that produce good yellow chemicals. However, one of the first plants widely used was weld. Weld supplied the yellows common during the Middle Ages. Blue, the indigo plant from India supplied the blue chemical used throughout the world. Indigo blue was one of the most common dyes used in the early history of the United States. Ever heard of blue jeans? The chemistry of your clothes today. Today, most of the colors you see in clothes, inks, foods, plastics, etc., come from synthetic human-made dye chemicals and not natural dyes. Chemists have developed thousands of synthetic chemical dyes in every shade of color. These dyes are often brighter, faster, and cheaper than natural dyes. Even blue jeans are now produced with synthetic indigo blue. Even though there are many chemical dyes to choose from, chemists are always trying to produce new and improved chemical compounds that can be used to color plastics, add color to natural and human-made fabrics like nylon and rayon, to color food and, uh, and are safe to eat, and add color to a paint that won't fade in the sun. It, guys, any almost anything you eat or drink, look at the back. There are dyes in there. There's red number 40, red number, or yellow number 4, whatever. There, there's all kinds of dyes. You can think chemistry for all the color you experience in your world. All right, so now there are questions that are going to, they're going to ask you about the stuff that I just read to you. Okay? If you have any questions or have any issues, let me know. But I'm going to let you guys um, now answer these based off of the reading. So hopefully you listened, um, or if you need to go back, the reading's right there, but let me know if you need anything. We are almost done. In fact, this is the last thing for you guys, so have a great rest of your year. If you need anything at all, let me know. Bye.